Jesus was finally crucified along with other criminals. The Jews used all deceitful methods they could do, and eventually they succeeded. After then, they turned their attention to keeping the Passover Sabbath, which would begin in a few hours. They did not let this holy Sabbath be dishonored, so they requested Pilate to have the legs of the convicts broken and the bodies were taken down. The soldiers came and broke the legs of the victims who had not died yet. However, Jesus had already passed away, so the soldiers did not break his legs. All of a sudden, one of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear and confirmed that Jesus had died. At that moment, blood and water flowed out of him abruptly. John was thrilled as he watched every moment that happened to Jesus on the cross. This is because he personally witnessed that every prophecy in the Old Testament was fulfilled through Jesus' death without losing any detail. Usually, convicts on the cross would suffer for several days until they completely died. However, in this case, the cross had to be removed quickly, so the convicts on the cross must bear an insult to have their legs broken. In such circumstances, Jesus' legs were not broken according to the prophecy. Not one of his bones shall be broken. Moreover, originally, it never happened that soldiers pierced those on the cross with a spear. But Jesus had suffered. For this, the prophecy in the Old Testament, they will look on the one they have pierced, was fulfilled as well. Yes, it did. Jesus is the Christ who came to the earth to fulfill his command as God prophesied. Then, what is God's command? It can be symbolically understood as the water and the blood flowing out from Jesus' body. Jesus, who was sinless, came into the world in the form of a sinner and was baptized by immersion and he redeemed our sin by bleeding on the cross. We hereby receive forgiveness by relying on his blood, and now we are going toward eternity by drinking the water of life Jesus gives us. In other words, Jesus purified us with his own blood and opened the new door to participate in God's work. Jesus wholly achieved lots of prophecy in the Old Testament, and it demonstrates that God's picture from the past to the future has already been perfectly drawn. This means that we should prepare for the second coming and the time of the end that the Lord has prepared. Being cleansed by his blood is not our final destination, and it is just a start of a new life towards righteousness. However, since we are not initially righteous, it is difficult for us to live righteous lives. Therefore, we should be changed and strengthen our hearts before the Lord, who permits us to live righteous lives by personally fulfilling God's promise through himself. But the new life we have received through the suffering and death of Jesus, the Son of God, is still at risk. That risk originates from myself. If I, who is small, unstable and incompetent, is a master in our lives, the only new life we have received will end in failure. Thus, we should trust and rely on God most of all to succeed in a righteous life and not end in failure. We should not be proud, but humble. We should not be jealous, but modest. 
When we have this attitude, God will use us for his will and guide us into the path of success which he has prepared for us.